Life, so they say, is but a game, and they let it slip away. Love, like the autumn sun, should be dying, but it's only just begun. Like the twilight in the road up ahead, they don't see just where we're going. All the secrets in the universe whisper in our ears, and all the years come and go take us up, always up. We may never pass this way again. I was telling Tim earlier, I have this heaviness in my chest that's been there for two days. Oh, I think it's just pent up grief. Mm. You know, I came back from Houston this week after being with my family for my sister's service and um, didn't shed a lot of tears, but I think they're wanting to come. You're not helping any. <laughs> or maybe you're helping a whole lot. <laughs> Dreams, so they say, are for the fools, and they let them drift away. Peace, like the silent dove, should be flying, but it's only just begun. Like Columbus in the olden days, we must gather all our courage, sail our ships out on the open sea, cast away our fears, and all the years will come and go, take us up, always up. We may never pass this way again. You know what's next? So I want to laugh while the laughing is easy. I want to cry if it makes it worthwhile. I may never pass this way again. That's why I want it with you. Because you make me feel like I'm more than a friend, like I'm the journey and you're the journey's end. I may never pass this way again. That's why I want it with you. Choose the you. Choose the you. We probably won't pass this way again, likely in the same body, right? In the same experience, undoubtedly in my mind, we will pass this way or some way again. But I want to laugh while the laughing is easy. I want to cry if it makes it worthwhile. I want to live my life. Do you want to live your life? There is a story of a samurai soldier, samurai warrior, big, mighty samurai, tough. And he went to see a little monk, big samurai soldier, little monk. Monk, he said, in a voice accustomed to attention and obedience, teach me about heaven and hell. The monk looked up at the mighty warrior and replied with utter disdain, teach you about heaven and hell? I couldn't teach you anything. You're dirty, you smell, your blade is rusty, you're a disgrace, an embarrassment to the samurai class. Get out of here, go away. I can't stand the sight of you. The samurai was astonished. He was enraged. And he lifted his sword, and as he was about to bring it down upon the monk's head, the monk said, that is hell. Again astonished. The warrior took a breath, and he was humbled by the wisdom and the compassion and the surrender of this small man to treat such a large warrior in such a way, to be willing to lose his own life. Then he knelt before the monk, and he wept, and the monk said, and that is heaven. heaven and hell, states of consciousness. We get to choose whether we are in heaven or we are in hell. Yesterday I was driving down the street 
here in town and and I was working on my talk. And I was telling the story to myself. And then a car in front of me seemed to forget how to make a right hand turn. Instead of just making a right hand turn, they were taking their time in remembering that the steering wheel actually moved to the right. And I went, oh, my word, come on. And I went, and that is hell. And I just laughed. I just laughed. How quickly we can give our power away. I just, simple, innocent, really unnecessary things. I was in absolutely no hurry, right? But that ego part of us that just wants to do whatever it is that it does, and it wreaks havoc on us. And it wreaks havoc on the the light of love in the world. The more that we stay in that consciousness of hell, we rob ourselves of being in heaven. So I know I talk about self-love a lot. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment, says Jesus. We are told, says Jesus. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself, from Matthew. Yada, 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 yeah, 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 I know, I know, self-love. I'm supposed to love myself. I love myself. I love myself the way I am, right? But are you really? Seriously, are you taking it to that next level? Are you truly giving yourself the gift of fully loving yourself? And therefore, living in, and this is where the rubber meets the road, living in integrity with yourself. We talk a lot about living in integrity, right? But isn't most of that about focusing outside of ourselves and how we are living in integrity in the world? Have you ever stopped to wonder, are you living in your own integrity with yourself? That is where the deeper love comes from Hamlet. This above all, to thine own self be true, and it must follow as the night the day. Thou canst not then be false to anyone. To thine own self be true. I was working on this talk before I left for um, Texas. And one of the things that spurred me along the path of that was coming across two people that I follow, Jim Palmer and Father Richard Rohr. Richard Rohr is a Franciscan friar, and he teaches, where, where, where is Richard? That's funny, oh, there he is. Um, he's an ecumenical teacher, and he, um, he teaches how God's grace guides us to our birthright as being made of divine love. A Franciscan friar, yes, he's a Franciscan, and the Franciscans and the Jesuits teach a very loving presence of God. But he actually teaches that divine love is our birthright. And we don't hear that in mainstream teachings. And then Jim Palmer was a former megachurch pastor. Have you heard of him? There's 
I can't remember the name of the other man. He spoke at the Unity Convention a couple of years ago. But Jim Palmer was a mega church, I mean a mega mega church pastor. And one day he just walked away. And he went, I can't do this anymore. Everything that I'm teaching to him became very harmful to other people. And he is now a, uh, he's the founder at the Center for Non-Religious Spirituality and the chaplain at American Humanist Association. Two teachers who have shifted how they teach in the world to, um, to a more inclusive teaching of original blessing, which I think is so very, very important for the world to get, that we are not born in original sin. We are born into original blessing. We are divine beings. I know every single one of you in this room know that. And the more we can live from that place, being in integrity with ourselves, believing the teachings that every spiritual master has taught, to be in complete integrity with the, div the divinity <coughs> and the divine oneness. So, I want to share with you uh, Jim Palmer. Stop pleasing others at the expense of your own integrity. What I mean by integrity is not about good or bad, right or wrong, or what you should or should not do. The integrity I am referring to is about being true to your authentic and highest self. So what is your authentic and highest self? It's you owning, inhabiting, and expressing who you are most naturally. It's you aligning yourself with your values, convictions, and what most matters to you in life. It's you committing to cultivate your highest potentialities and possibilities. It's you standing your ground in your own critical thinking, choosing the path that fosters your growth and well-being, and resolving to live according to your truth. Live according to your truth. Refusing to allow the abuse, manipulation, harm, or toxicity of others. Not allowing others to make you feel responsible for their happiness. You're not responsible for other people's happiness. Now you can be there with compassion, right? But each person has to live their life. It's not our role to go in and fix them. It is ours to show them the love and compassion and ask, how may I support you? I have two friends that are so good about doing that. And I with them. How can I support you? What do you need? And oftentimes it's, Really nothing, just hearing me and loving me and knowing that I'm not alone, but not me taking on their problems or them taking on mine. It's affirming them for who they are. It's you believing in yourself and your ability to direct your own life taking responsibility for doing your own personal and inner work. If others in your life want you to be someone you are not, you must surrender your impulse to keep living your life for them. You will have to let go of your need to take care of them emotionally or win their approval. That can be a big one for us, or some of us, maybe not you. You must be true to yourself. Authenticity must become more essential in your life than pleasing others and social acceptance. This is true integrity. To be true to yourself. Don't let other people get in your head and tell you what you should or should not do 
or how you should believe. Now, my prayer is, my hope is, that you are always living a life of grace and not doing harm to yourself or other people. But when it comes down to it, you still get to choose your own heaven or hell, right? And yes, we need to be held accountable when things go off kilter and we get off the rails, right? But to find that true depth of your being, to be true to yourself. He goes on to say, it's not necessary to pretend to agree with everyone. It's not necessary to take responsibility for how others feel. It's not necessary to apologize often. I was listening to a podcast and one, I don't know who it was that was speaking, but they did a study of women and um, and the women that they were talking to were were professional women, lawyers, doctors, you name it, right? And talking to them about how often in the conversations and meetings they start off with, I'm sorry. Now, I'm not a man, I'm a woman. I don't know how this works in the world of men, but I do know that in the world of women, no matter who you are or what your, your work in the world is, on a very large scale, women have been groomed to apologize. Stop doing that. Even if you do it within yourself. Edwin Gaines, I shared a video of hers in the e-blast a couple weeks ago. Oh, she's such a magnificent teacher. And one of the uh, workshops with her that I went to several years ago was, of course, an empowerment workshop. And she goes, I am Edwin Gaines, and I am a woman of power, of passion, of purpose, of presence, of prosperity. And I have to say that at that time, and again, it was many, many years ago, probably 30 years ago, that that was the first time that I heard that. In, at least in that way. I mean, I had read books, but to hear someone stand in front of us and be so clear in who they were, in who they are, because she is still that. Find that place where you can stand in the presence, in the power, in the purpose, and living that life of full prosperity, which is money and oh so much more, right? It's not necessary to feel uncomfortable if someone disapproves of you. It's not necessary to act like the people around you. It's not necessary to need praise to feel good. Feel good about yourself. It's nice to get it from other people. But first, pat yourself on the back. And it's not necessary to go to great lengths to avoid conflict, to succumb to the pressure of fitting in, to believe that you are less than others. Let go of the fear of letting others down. And let go of tolerating toxic people and situations. You have within you the power, the presence to do that. Whoever you are and however powerful you are in your own being at this moment, I invite you to go deeper. I invite you to find that deeper love, that place where you are truly living in integrity with yourself by just simply asking, how does that feel right now? How am I feeling right now? 
You can be in your power and not be obnoxious. I'm not talking about being obnoxious. When you're truly in your power, you are a loving presence. Can you feel that? And again, I don't care where you are in your stage of spiritual growth, you're still sitting here in this room, so you're still planted on planet Earth. And unless you're a true bodhisattva, and maybe you are, there's still more you can do about loving yourself. It's about staying in that integrity to thine own self be true. So, a couple of you may remember Richard Rogers. Yeah, okay, so Richard Rogers used to be a minister here several incarnations ago. And he's a wonderful man, wonderful unity minister. He's now living in uh, Phoenix. And he's partially retired, but still also doing ministry. But he put out on Facebook, Richard does these things every now and then. And he asked people to join him for 40 days. He likes to do 40 day, what he calls challenges. I don't like to call them challenges. Challenges make them, I know, right? It makes it sound like work. But an opportunity to step into affirming for yourself for 40 days, he started this on the 27th. You obviously could start at any time. Every day in every way, my life is getting better and better. This is a tried and true unity affirmation that I learned probably from first time I stepped in a unity ministry. Every day in every way, I'm getting better and better. And he is offering us the opportunity to repeat this 100 times a day for or from, I suppose that's supposed to be, uh, 40 days. You want to play? Right? Start where you are. And it's not that hard. You're, oh, man, 100 times a day, seriously? Oh, it's so easy to do. It's so easy to do. Take a picture of it if you want so you can remember it. It's so Every day and every way, my life is getting better and better. And I, I change it up with every day and every way, I am getting better and better. I, my life, it's all one and the same, right? Mm -hmm. To thine own self be true. Find the pathway that empowers you, that helps you to remember that true, true essence of where you are and who you are and what you want to be to accomplish all that you are.